so that was Yannick about um, the um, sequential implementation. And now I'm going to um, talk, uh, I'm going to present how we made it to, uh, to a parallel program and how the performance for this program uh, developed. Uh, for parallelization, we used uh, MPI. Um, again, also from the motivation that we wanted to learn about it because we used it in uh, already in few previous programs. And so um, we also wanted to know how we implemented it um, on our own. And so, uh, yeah, so first of all, we thought about um, what part of the program we could um, uh, parallelize. And um, so looking at the simulation loop, uh, as Yannick mentioned, um, uh, we do have the attraction and uh, the update as the two main steps um, that we have to do, uh, or as the two main calculation steps. Uh, so we thought, okay, we can distribute the work of, of those steps onto multiple processors. So for the attraction, um, we can we can do the attraction of um, of all the objects, distribute them to the processors. So if we say, okay, we have one processor zero usually for for coordination. Then we can take the remaining p minus one processors, and um, each of the processor gets n divided by p minus one of the objects, where n is the the, the number of, of objects we are looking at, and those are all the the planets, the sun, and all the asteroids, um, as as Yannick said, and so we can distribute the work, calculate the attraction, collect that all again in the simulation loop, and then use that to update the steps. So once again, then take the update step distribute again the, the the work on all the processors to perform the Euler step now uh, for all the um, for for only uh, a certain amount of, of objects uh, for, yeah for the Euler step and now to go into a little bit more detail how we did that um, was that we first for all the processors initialized MPI of course it's always what you have to do and then we initialized an, an own system for each of the processors, so by this class system, just to allocate memory for each of the system and also gain access to the methods. So we, from the sequential solution, we still had the, the, the methods attraction and update steps, and we um, also wanted to use them on all the processors. Um, so we, so we um, initialized the system to get those methods and also allocate memory. And then for sending and receiving, we also allocate a little bit more memory um, to, to um, send and receive uh, the double arrays with all the data that we are dealing with or, or sending around. And yeah, like I said, as usual, you have uh, rank zero um, as, um, as your coordination process. Uh, processor, and then all the remaining processors on the right hand side who do um, the, the calculation. And now, so here you can see now the distribution of the attraction part. So first of all, we prepare the data to be sent to all the processors. Then we send them, all the other processors wait to receive them. So they need all the positions, which already raises a question if MPI was the best choice or not. Um, but we'll come to that in a second. Um, so they need to receive all the position of all the other objects because uh, the gravitation on one object, of course, depends on all other positions of all the other objects. Um, so they need to receive all the positions, then sort that into their objects, but then only calculate, of course, um, the attraction for their n over p minus one objects, um, which they are supposed to do. And once they've done that, they um, prepare the data to send back to rank zero, of course. Zero waits to receive all of the data and sorts that into its system again to have the attraction done. And then later in the loop, um, the same for updating the positions. So uh, they prepare to send the data again. Um, all the processors receive the data, sorts that, calculates the update step here shown. So updating the, the positions, send it back, and then back on the left side to, to uh, processor zero again. And it receives it and sorts it into the system. And then later on, we, we um, also have this visual visualization package, which will move the objects around. And, and this this will be done by rank zero again. Um, okay. So this is basically uh, the MPI um, parallelization that we did on a project. Now, the first thing is to think about what do we even expect as first improvement from our sequential solution. So if you compare the sequential solution running on one processor and compare on the right hand side the parallel solution first on two processors, we actually might expect that the parallel solution on two processors might already take longer. And that's simply because on two processors, 
there's still the calculation all happening on one processor and then there's still some send and receives by the MPI, which should generally just increase um, the, the computation time. And so our ex first expectation is that the um, time for the sequential solution should be smaller than the runtime for a parallel solution on two processors. And now just to give a give a real short look into the code, it's, it's the only part I wanna show just to give an example on, on how the implementation looks like. So this is the implementation for all the ranks that are not zero. So for all the worker processes, uh, you can see in the, in the first step that they uh, receive the positions and the masses. Um, and then they sort that into their system so that they later can use um, the attraction method in the uh, so in the in the red box there's shown there's actually the the um, selection of the of the correct indices for the uh, for the workload that this processor is supposed to do because it's of course not supposed to calculate all the attraction for all objects but only for a certain amount of them and then uh, prepares uh, yeah the results into an array and and this data to send via the MPI sent back to the um, processor zero again so that's what it looks like in the code and of course um, a lot more going on around there okay so the first results of our performance is a rather trivial plot but we did it just to check that everything at least works the way we expect it to be so first we were looking for different for, for the runtime on different processors um, for different um, number of, oh, there's actually a typo I see. So on the x-axis, it is supposed to be the number of time steps that the simulation does. So um, the, this is not the number of processes, but the number of time steps that the, the simulation runs. And this was just to check that if we have 10 times the number of time steps that we perform, we expect also the runtime to be 10 times as large. And, and um, vice versa, of course, for, for less time steps. And this was just to make sure that if we want to compare um, for uh, different processes with different uh, system sizes uh, and, and their runtimes, um, that we can also perform less time steps uh, just to just to later compare um, what, the, what the runtime actually will look like. Um, and also to make sure that it does not depend on, on, the, um, on the simulation time itself. Now the first interesting plot is shown here. And this was at first really surprising for us. So if we take one of the curves, this is done for a fixed system size of, in this case, 211 uh, objects. And we can see that for, for more particles, uh, more processors, we, we have more processors, so two, three, four, and five, the, the runtime of the of the um, program, of course, decreases, but then increases again. And then that immediately rose, uh, yeah, it was the question why this is, and um, yeah, and this uh, if you if you think about how MPI works and the step that I said that MPI has to send all the data to all the processors, what happens is that for for more amount of processes, um, the the communication compared to the actual workload that has to be done um, rises uh, rises a lot. So so if you use too many processes for a small system. You have way too much communication going on compared to uh, what uh, you would actually uh, need and compared to the calculations that you actually do. And so now we compare this now to scale with different system sizes. And now that's that's the results for for that. And there we can see, of course, if the, if the system size increases, like if we have a, a lot more uh, objects to calculate, the minimum of the runtime also shifts to to more processors of course so then again we have more calculations to do and then it's also worth taking more mpi communication into account but still if you take if you have too many processors the runtime will increase again because the the uh, communication will be too much so it's really about finding a good balance between efficient workload distribution so really to look how much calculation do i actually have to do and the mpi communication that needs to be done then and that's, this is problem specific for our for our program here because if you have other prob uh, other systems where they really um, can be uh, are completely independent areas of the system that you can calculate then of course more processors should um, have a less runtime, but but in this case, it, it increases again for too many processors. 
what we can see really nice here is that there is uh, our expectation um, fulfilled that we expect the uh, parallel solution on two processors to be uh, to take longer than the sequential solution on one processor, which is nice. Um, again, so the expectation here is is, um, is fulfilled in some sense. And then we also export it now to get into a little bit more detail how, what the exact um, workload distribution of communication and calculation is for different processes. So this is just one example that we exported from Vampire for the 211 reference case, 211 objects. And we can see for, for 10 uh, processors, for example, there's way too much communication uh, of the um, MPI communication going on compared to the actual update and reflection size, of course. So um, this just, um, again, shows the behavior of increasing runtime for, for more uh, uh, processors again. So there are some, some improvements that we could make. So in our system, the masses don't change. So, so first thing we can do, we can can forget about sending the, the mass vector because this is constant and um, actually initialized by every processor at the beginning anyway. So we can get rid of that, but this will not really change much of the performance, just a little bit. And um, another thing is that for the Euler step, we can reduce the array length. This is still a thing we want to do for the report. So um, there we still send um, the whole arrays as for the attraction step where it is necessary, but not for the updating Euler step, there we can reduce the length of, of the arrays actually, which you can see here. So there for the update position part, we still have all the two n entries of all the vectors that we need to send and receive, um, which we can reduce um, because these n over p minus one are sufficient here. So we do not need all of those of those vectors to send because we operate only on them anyway. Yeah, and to now to conclude all that, um, first of all, the the results show exactly the behavior that we expect, which is which is really nice to see. Um, also, um, really uh, for our system specific, it's it's really important to find a balance between, like I said, the efficient workload distribution and the MPI communication. So so to find a minimum runtime really depends on the processes, and you may not want to have too many of them. What you can do to to improve the code is uh, to, like I said, to reduce the amount of data that's, that needs to be sent, but actually you cannot really reduce the number of sent and receive calls. So this should not be possible as far as we thought about it yet. Um, and in the end, MPI might not be even the best choice for our problem. So a shared memory approach should, should perform better maybe, it should have been a better choice because um, then we get rid of all the sent and receives or, or and, and yeah, so this, uh, because especially because this is one of the, the main calculation time needed. But um, a, a big advantage of the approach and, and of the system that we use here is that we gain a good understanding on how MPI works because um, yeah, if we just the runtime to decrease with more processors, okay, well, there's some result to expect, but not really to see the plots, how they are and, and really make you, makes you think about why this is and, and even giving you a better understanding on MPI. So, um, yeah, that's it from, from our side, and I thank you. And uh, now you can ask questions.